Hello and welcome to Cisco Router Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. Today we're doing how to configure NAT. This time it's dynamic NAT, network address translation, also known as port address translation. This is based on Chapter 7 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available online through the usual resellers. The particular version of the Cisco Internet Work Operating System that we're working with today is version 15.1. These procedures have been fundamentally unchanged for a long time, so no matter which version you're working with, uh, the procedures will be fundamentally the same. Here's a look at the diagram that we're working from. It's pretty simple. We have a management workstation configured, as you can see here, with an IP address of 192.168.101.2. A router with a statically configured inside interface, in this case on interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0, 192.168.101.1, and a, uh, an outside interface configured as a DHCP client. It's not required, but that's a, a fairly common uh, configuration, especially in small offices, and so that's the one that I chose to use here. But it would certainly work with a statically configured address on the outside interface as well. Here are the prerequisites for this lesson. You'll need the following, unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco router, and familiarity with working in the command line environment. Even if you're new to the Cisco world, if you've worked in Unix or even a Windows uh, PowerShell or command environment, then you should be okay with the commands that I'm going to show you here. But this will be done in the command line interface. Equipment software requirements, you'll need one Cisco router. I used a Cisco model 1941. One comment, um, because Cisco's now started branding their home routers with the Cisco brand, um, I, I need to clarify, this will work on a commercial grade router, not on the former Linksys uh, routers uh, or a home router. It requires the iOS, the Cisco Internet Work Operating System, in order for these procedures to work. You'll also need a computer for your management workstation, a console cable, and some form of terminal emulation software such as PuTTY, which is what I'm using for the demonstration. Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. No guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production router without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. The procedures shown in this video will modify your router's existing configuration, so ensure you've fully backed up your router's configuration and software images before commencing these procedures. Just generally good advice anyway. Performing these procedures may open your router to the public Internet and subject your network to attack, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption, and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Here's a summary of the steps. It's really not very complicated. There's only three or four steps. I, I list three here. You could make an argument that there's four, as you'll see when we do the demo. But you identify the inside and outside interfaces. You create an access control list to identify and permit the traffic flow. And then you apply that access control list to the outside interface and enable NAT overloading, all in the same command. So, like I say, pretty straightforward. Let's do it. First thing we need to do is to get into privilege mode, so we'll tap the command EN, short for enable, and enter our password, our privilege mode password. Now we're in privilege mode. You can tell that because the pound sign in the prompt indicates that we're in privilege mode, and we're going to go into interface configuration mode. We have to start by going into global configuration mode with the command configure terminal, which will abbreviate conf space T, but that's short for configure terminal. Notice that the prompt now changes to router, in parenthesis, config pound. That means we're in global configuration mode. Now we have to go into interface configuration mode, and we'll start with interface gigabit 0 slash 0. So int g 0 slash 0, abbreviating the commands. And we're going to identify that as the inside interface. So the command is ip nat inside. Now we'll do the same thing on the outside interface as soon as it takes the command, which takes a second, like you just saw here. So we'll do interface g0 slash 1, short for gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1, and we're going to do the command ip nat outside. If you're wondering, nvio is the nat virtual interface, which is created automatically. We're not going to use it in, the, in this particular exercise, but it is created automatically with that command ip nat inside. So now we've identified the two interfaces that are going to be used for nat. Uh, we now have to create our access control list. This is a simple access control list. It's an extended list with the command access list 100 permit 
IP any any. You'll notice that the prompt changes back to global configuration mode. That's one of those commands where you can actually execute it in a sub mode and it'll take it. And the command simply says create an access list numbered 100 which tells the router that it's an extended list. We're going to permit uh, traffic flow, in this case IP traffic, from any source going to any destination. You might want to tighten that up a little bit for security purposes, but honestly, if, if you're going to allow NAT, you're probably going to allow most traffic through anyway, so I, I tend to leave it wide open, but there may be times where you might want to tighten it up a little bit, and you could certainly specify a subnet or even an individual uh, node if you really wanted to do that. Now we have to apply it to the outside interface, and we're going to do that with a command IP NAT inside source list 100 interface g0 slash 1 overload. What that does is that says apply the access control list that we just configured numbered 100 to the outside interface in this case interface g0 slash 1 and enable overloading which is another way of saying uh, port address translation or dynamic NAT. That's the many to one mapping which you commonly see in home networks and and frankly in, in many small businesses and even large large businesses originally developed to uh, expand the available number of IP addresses that were available. So now we've done it and if we've done it right it should work. Let's test it. We'll see if we can hit a website through our our router. Okay, so we've got a browser open. Let's see if we can hit soundtraining.net. So we'll go to www.soundtraining.net and see if it comes up. Looks like it's going to. And there it is. So we know that NET is working because that's the only connection I have from this computer is through the router to the internet. Let's take a look at some of the things that we can see. First of all, let's come over here and do a show IP NET translations and that'll show us oops forgot to go back to privilege mode or I could proceed it with a modifier do let's do that so the command is do show IP net translation I'm just not typing very well today and there we go there you can see the translation the first number is the inside global address inside global is the actual IP on the outside interface. So that is the outside interface on the router. Inside local is the source. That's my PC that's originating the request. Outside local is the destination, and outside global is also the destination. And you'll notice that there's a, a number appended to the end, and that is a port number. If we drill down, and I'm not going to make you look through the whole thing, eventually we'd see port 80 stuff going out to the soundtraining.net website. Let's break out of that and do one more thing. We'll do the command do debug IP NAT and that turns on debugging and you can actually see the NAT uh, translations here so the uh, the S indicates source the D indicates destination and there you can see all of the NAT translations taking place we'll turn that off with the command U space all which is short for undebug all again I need to either use the do modifier or be back in privilege mode. I keep forgetting to do that. But there we go. Turn it off. So there's a couple of things you can do. One more thing. You can do a show IP NAT statistics and it'll give you some information about the types of connections, the number of hits, various information about your NAT connection. So as you can see, there's not a lot to it. It's really pretty easy. If you'd like more information about uh, various things related to IT, whether it's Cisco router configuration, ASAs, Linux, customer service for IT, check out our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog, and in fact, you can find a copy, a written copy of the procedures that I just showed you on the blog. Uh, also, you can like us on Facebook at www.soundtraining.net slash Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or Google+. Plus. If you'd like more videos, we've got a ton of them, and we're adding new ones about one a week, sometimes more, occasionally less, at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, I'd love it if you'd get a copy of it. It's my book on Cisco router configuration. It's part of the Accidental Administrator series. It's the Cisco Router Step-by-Step -step Configuration Guide available at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore or through the usual online resellers. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.